Summary of Lady Macbeth by Susan King The story starts in 1058, when Gruid, also known as Lady Macbeth, is 42 years old. She lives in a castle with Bethawk, a healer, and Drosten, a monk, both of whom she has known since they were young. Gruid, who has experienced two widowhoods, misses her second husband, Macbeth. She thinks about her childhood before she met him and their life together. She starts to think about her past, and the rest of the book is made up of her memories. Gruida's father, Bode, was the Mormaer of Fife. He raised her. Her mother, Ailsa, died when she was young, but she still feels close to her through Celtic magic and prediction, which Elsa used but couldn't teach her daughter because she died before she could. Gruid spent most of her childhood in the fortress Dun Elgin, where she learned to read, write, run a home, and use a sword. Even though young noblewomen usually learn to read, write, and do housework, Gruid convinces Bode to let her learn to defend herself after she has tried to be kidnapped twice, once by a man named Crenan, who denies it, and once by Thorfinn Sigurdsson. Both men try to take her so they can marry her or give her to one of their cousins to marry. This is because Gruid comes from a royal family with a long and important history. Bode marries her to Gilcomgan Matt Crenan, the more mayor of Moray, a nearby region, to keep her from being taken again. At first, Gruid doesn't like this match. Gilcomgan is older than she is, and he is famous for killing his uncle Finlac to become more mayor of Moray. But after they get married, she starts to like him more, and she gets pregnant with his kid. But before she gives birth, she hears that Gilcomgan has been killed by Macbeth, a lord from Moray whose father, Finlac, Gilcomgan killed. Macbeth killed Gilcomgan to get back at Gilcomgan for killing Finlac. Gruid has met Macbeth before and didn't like him, but they did kiss once. The day after she loses her husband, Macbeth comes to her house and makes her marry him. Gruid doesn't like Macbeth and won't accept him as her husband or as the true Mormaer of Moray, even though her family and the people of Moray quickly warm up to him. But as time goes on, she starts to see Macbeth's good sides. They work well together because their goals are similar, and their joined genes give Macbeth a strong claim to the crown of Scotland. Macbeth wants to get even with the ruling family because they let his father be killed and he doesn't like that. Gruid also sees taking the throne as payback after King Malcolm or one of his spies kills her father, Bode. The couple believes that it is their birthright to be king and queen of Scotland and that it is their job to their famous family history and cousins who were killed to take the throne of Scotland. When King Malcolm dies, his cousin Duncan takes his place. Duncan asks Macbeth to be a general for him, and Macbeth agrees. After years of wars that Macbeth warned against and an attempt to kill the king by Duncan, Macbeth turns against the king. On the battlefield, the two meet with huge forces, but they fight for the crown one-on-one, -on -one, hand to hand. Macbeth wins, and he takes over as king. Macbeth and Gruid are in charge of Scotland for nearly 20 years. Even though neither their rule nor their marriage is perfect, Macbeth has to deal with Duncan's young, angry son Malcolm Mac Duncan often, and he and Gruid can't have healthy children, Gruid says that Macbeth is a peaceful, wise, and well-liked leader who does his best to prepare Scotland for the future. Malcolm Mac Duncan ends up killing Macbeth in the end. In the minutes before Macbeth dies, he and Gruid crown Luloch, Gruida's only live child from her first marriage and son from her first marriage. Luloch is king of Scotland, but Malcolm Mac Duncan also wants to be king, and the two are always at war with each other. At the end of the book, Luloch is getting ready for war, and Gruid, who is tired of fighting in politics, is getting ready to move to a cabin in northern Scotland as a widow and study magic and prophecy. About the author Susan Fraser King was born Susan Loney, but she is also known as Susan King. She grew up and went to school in New York City. She got a BA in Art and an MA in Art History from the University of Maryland. She also started a PhD in Art History and Ancient Studies, but she never finished it. She wrote her first book, The Blackthorns Rose, in 1994. Since then, she has written over 20 more historical stories and romances. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. 
please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.